What is up guys, Evil Do Arm here today, and today I have for you part four of our 2D side-scroller tutorial that we're working on here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do in this video today is we're gonna create a health bar and an energy bar to go ahead and put as an overlay on our screen. We're gonna create a couple of pickups to adjust those and maybe make the energy bar deplete some stamina when we go ahead and use our kunai throw or our attacks. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. And the very first thing we're gonna need to do is create a new folder. So jump out to the content tab out here, way out on the uh, left side here, and we're gonna create a new folder, and that folder is gonna be called widgets. So all interfaces, all of the different interfaces that you're gonna use in Unreal Engine 4 are called widgets. So once you're in your widgets folder, you're going to go ahead and right click, you're going to click user interface, and you're going to create a widget blueprint. This widget blueprint, we're going to go ahead and call HUD for heads up display, the main page, and control shift S to save everything. So when you go ahead and open up this widget blueprint, you're going to see a dotted line or a box all around here. And this is going to basically be the character screen or what the player can see. Inside here, we're going to need to decide where we want to put our health and our energy bar. So our health and energy bar, we're probably going to put in this top left corner up here. So to get started with that, we're going to need to divide up the screen a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and put a border in the top left corner. So we're going to drop this border, top left corner, and we'll make it about, I don't know, that's probably a good enough size right there. So we have this little border in the top left corner. What we're going to want to do is anchor that border to the top left corner. So basically, no matter what your player screen size is, this border is always going to be in the top left. To do that, you see this little target that's right here on the item. Click the top left, and now it is anchored in the top left. Additionally, you can do that over here on the right side, where you see anchors, and select the top left anchor on the uh, border here. So what we're going to want to do with this border is make it so that it's transparent, so that you can see through it. So what you're going to want to do is go over to the right side over here on the border and select Appearance. You'll see Brush Color, and what you're going to do is change that alpha channel to zero. Um, basically, that makes it so it's see-through, transparent, fully transparent. So in order to put our energy and health bars into this box, we're going to need to add some things called vertical and horizontal boxes. So what you're going to do in this palette search up at the top is type in horizontal box and drag it and drop it underneath the border. Then underneath that horizontal box, we'll make sure that it's a uh, child underneath the border. So you can see if I hit this little tab, it minimizes the horizontal border. So from there, you're going to go ahead and add in vertical borders. So we're going to add two of those vertical boxes in. So type in vertical, vertical box, come in, drop it underneath the horizontal box. So now if we click on this, I don't know if you can really make it out, but basically we have two vertical boxes that are uh, distributed across this border. So to make those fill the box, what you're going to do is click the vertical box, click the vertical box, and over here on the right, you're going to see an option that says fill. Click fill. Same thing with this other vertical box. Go ahead and click fill. And so now our vertical box splits this directly down the middle um, inside of our border. So each of these vertical boxes is going to need to get split in half once again. So we're going to need to drop in two horizontal boxes underneath each of those vertical boxes. So once again, type in horizontal box, horizontal box, and drop each one underneath the vertical boxes. Uh, same thing with this other vertical box. So now each vertical box has two horizontal boxes. And once again, same exact thing. You need to go ahead and set each of these to fill. So click on each box and select fill over on the right. This is going to evenly split up our little box into four little segments. So what we're going to want to do for the first two, the left and the right, is we're going to want to put a text box or a text block here. So what we're going to do is look for text, and we have the text option. So the first horizontal box at the top, we're going to put a text underneath that. So now we have a text block underneath it. Same thing with the second option. It's going to put a text block underneath this horizontal box as well. So now we have two text blocks there. The text block, we're going to just go ahead and define it. So the top bar, we're going to make health. And the second box, we're going to go ahead and make stamina. So once again, just to do that, click the text, click over here where it says content text, and you can change whatever it says. So we now have a health and a stamina. Now we want to go ahead and center that as well. So what we're going to do is click these little center options, boom, boom. Then it's going to center our text block there. Same thing with this one. We're going to click both center options, and that will center our health and stamina meters right in the middle. So once again, click the text, and you can see the centering over here. Center, center, vertically aligned, horizontally aligned. So as you can see, the text here is not entirely filling this box. So what we want to do is shift those over so our progress bars or our health bars and our stamina bars take up more of the space. To do that, you're going to go ahead and click on the vertical box that controls both of these, and you're going to change the fill adjustment rate. So basically, we want to lower this number so it takes up less space. As you can see, it shifts it over slightly. So if we keep lowering this number to get it to a good point, let's try 0 0.4. Sure, 0 0.4 looks like plenty enough. So now we have our text centered, our health standard, um, and we're ready to go ahead and add progress bars. So progress bars are what we're going to use to track our health. So we're going to go ahead and type in progress bar. We're going to go ahead and click that and drag it into each of the horizontal boxes below. So we see the horizontal box here and the horizontal box here. So as you can see, after we drop these progress bars in here, they don't take up very much space. So what we're going to want to do is go to each progress bar and just like before, go ahead and click fill. Same thing with this one, go ahead and click fill. 
So now we have our two progress bars and they fill up the entire screen right here. Um, so we do want a little bit of a space between them so you can make them out. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on the progress bar and then under these padding options that you see right here. So this is going to be minimized originally. If you click this little triangle right here, it's going to open up a padding menu. Just to put a little bit of spacing between each of them, go ahead and type in 5 for the top and 5 for the bottom. Same thing with the other progress bar, 5 for the top, 5 for the bottom. And that's going to create a little bit of a gap, as you can see, between the two bars. So we're good to go on that. Now what we're going to do is change the color that each of these bars fills with. So we're going to click on the health bar, and health in most games is usually green. So we're going to go to this fill color and opacity tab down here, where you see appearance. Uh, so we clicked on the progress bar, appearance, fill color and opacity. We're going to click on this, and let's make it a nice bright green. So just drag your color wheel to whatever you want. Uh, it's actually not a little too bright. Let's go a little bit darker. Cool. And that is what the color of the bar is going to be when it fills. Stamina will leave as blue. Stamina and blue seems fine. Okay, so this is our heads-up display all done, dusted, and set up. Now to adjust these stamina and health readings, what we need to do is we need to go back to our character blueprint and add these as variables to the character. So we're going to go ahead and close this out and hop over to the character. So once again, our character blueprint is under the character folder we created, 2D side scroller character. We're going to need to add two variables to this character. Both of these variables that we're going to add are going to be integers. We're going to use integers so the calculations are a little bit easier on the computer, so there's no rounding errors or anything like that. So what you're going to do is go ahead and click the Add Variable button. Over here, you're going to see where you can pick Variable Type on the top right here. This variable type is going to be set to integer, like I had said. We're also going to change this to Health. And then likewise, we're going to go ahead and add another variable, and that variable will already be an integer, and we're going to change that variable name to Stamina. So we have both of our variables. We have our health variable and our stamina variable. Both of these variables we need to set a default value for. So if you hit compile and save, it's going to let you do that. So hit health, and for health, we're going to set the default to 75, sure. Compile, save, health is at 75 to start with. Stamina will do the same. We'll start the stamina at 75 out of 100 or out of whatever you actually want to make this for your variable. So now the variable is saved to the character. We have the variable stored on the character. So if we once again close out the character and hop back into the widget that we had just created, so once again back to HUD, so now that we're back in the widget blueprint here for our heads up display, we're going to go ahead and click on the health progress bar. So the health progress bar. In the health progress bar, you're going to see an option that says progress, and you're going to see percent. What you're going to do is you're going to bind that percent. So you click this bind thing, create new binding. All right, so in here, what we need to do is go ahead and get the player's health from the player character. So to do that, we're going to type in get player character. And then from that, we're going to drag off and we're going to cast to 2D side scroller character, which is the name of our character, the folder that we've been adjusting for when we adjust the character, or the file rather. So from there, we're going to go ahead and drag both of these inputs off and drag it off into this. So from the character, what we want to do is we want to get the character's health. So we're going to just type in get health, and it's going to get the health variable from the character. From that point, we're going to divide this. So we're going to divide the health by 100. So 75 out of 100 means it should be 75% full. Drag that node back into the character uh, return node up here. Compile, save, and that is all set to go. So now if we hit play, nothing's going to happen because we haven't actually created the heads up display yet. So what we're going to do is go back into the character and go to the 2D side scroller game. So there's going to be an event begin play option right here. So we see event begin play. What we want to do is we want to go over to this and we want to go ahead and drag off of this. What we're going to do is we're going to create widget. The widget that we're going to create is going to be the HUD widget that we see right here. From there, what we want to do is add the widget to the viewport. So if you type in add to viewport, you will see that what we're going to add to the viewport is going to be this right here. So now what happens when we hit play is that viewport should pop up with our health and stamina. So now when we hit play, our health bar and our stamina bar both appear and we've got those, but nothing is filling up inside of the health bar as is expected. And because I'm an idiot, I totally was wrong. You don't want these health and stamina to be integers. You want them both to be float. So it's really simple to switch. All you do is click on the bar, click full float, and it becomes a float. Same thing with the stamina. We're going to go ahead and click on the bar, click float, compile, save. They're both now floats. If we go back into our HUD um, option up here, and if you still have it open, you can click up there on the HUD. Otherwise, you're going to have to go to the HUD menu down here. But anyway, just go ahead and click on that. Once you get back in here, we're going to have to do the same thing we just did. So we're under the get percent zero, which is getting our health bar. And uh, to get to that, once again, you're going to go to your designer, click on your progress bar, and then if you just hit graph, it'll pull up the get percent zero right here. So anyway, what we got to do is once again is get health. That's going to give us our health. We're going to divide this number by 100. So float divided by float. We're dividing that number by 100. That's going to give us a percent, which should be 75%. If we hit compile, save, play, and now our bar is 75% full with the health bar, exactly as we had expected. 
fantastic. We're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing with the stamina bar. So once again, hop back into the designer view here, click the stamina bar, click this bind option right here for percent. Under this option here, we're going to hit create binding and we're going to do the same exact thing we just did. So once again, it's going to be get player character, player character. We're going to cast to 2D side scroller character. We're going to get that, connect those. We're going to get the stamina from that character, get the stamina, divide by 100, divide by 100, and then plug that back into the percentage. Make sure we connect our nodes here, compile, save, click play, and now both of our bars are 75% full. So now we have our little UI. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a stamina recharging ability here. So basically we're going to make it so our stamina goes back up after we uh, start to deplete it. So to do that, we're going to head back over to the 2D side scroller character blueprint, which once again is under our character menu, 2D side scroller blueprint. Over here, what we need to do is on the event tick, we need to make some sort of regeneration that happens with the character. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the end of both of these little uh, pathings here. So they both come out to this set control rotation option that we see right here. What we're going to do is we're going to get our stamina and we'll code this over here and drag it in after and we'll add a little thing. So get stamina. We have our current stamina. What we want to do is we want to add stamina to that at a rate. What we're going to do is we're going to drag off of that and we're going to hit plus. We're just going to type in plus and it's going to give us the option of float plus float. Let's just start with, I don't know, let's do five just so we can see it at first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type in set stamina. So the stamina, we're going to take it, we're going to add five to it, and we're going to set it as our stamina. And that's going to happen every time the computer ticks. So just drag off of both of these to plug it in, and that will increase our stamina continuously. So if we go ahead and hit play now, you'll see the stamina bar filled up incredibly quickly. So that's a little too fast. So let's change this number to like 0 0.5, you know, compile, save, play. And now you see the stamina bar recharge is relatively slow, still quite fast. So let's try 0.05. 0.05, compile, save, hit play, and now you can see our stamina bar recharges really slowly um, over time. So now we have stamina recharging has been added into our character. That brings it back up. We could do the same exact thing with health recharging if we wanted, but we're going to make that pickups instead to show you how to do one of those. First things first, though, we're going to make it so our stamina depletes whenever we use an attack. So let's do it for the kunai, and we can go ahead and do it for the uh, sword attack as well later. So if we head over to our kunai option right here for the kunai action throw, what we want to do is we want to see if we have enough stamina and determine a minimum stamina to be able to throw a kunai. So let's just make it 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our stamina. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check if it's greater than a number. So we're going to hit, is it greater than 10? That's the number we're deciding. So do you have more than 10 stamina? What we're going to do off of that is we're going to branch. And then if we do have more than 10 stamina, what we're going to do is we're going to take our stamina and we're going to lower it by 10. So stamina minus, if we type the minus sign into the keyboard, float minus float, we're going to lower the stamina by 10. Okay, so if our stamina is greater than 10, what we're going to do is we're going to lower it by 10 and we're going to set stamina. So set stamina to that number. So, okay. So what does this say? If our stamina is greater than 10, what we're going to do is we're going to lower it by 10 and we'll set that to our new stamina value. At that point, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and follow the entire path that we'd already done. So we take this press key, bring it into the branch. We'll drag this over here so we can kind of put this all in a line and go ahead and do that. So now what this is doing is it's checking to see if we have enough stamina to be able to do the animation. So now if we hit compile, save, and play, what's going to happen every time I hit K is that the stamina is going to decrease by 10 until the point where I can no longer do it. And I have to wait for my stamina to recharge. Once the stamina recharges, I can go ahead and throw another one. Stamina recharges. I can go ahead and throw another one. So now we have a limit to our attacks um, based on how many we can do, and that is based on our stamina stat. So that's pretty cool. We have uh, basic mechanics of a game. We can do the same exact piece of code, a literal same exact piece of code for the sword attack. We'll just hit Control C, and we'll, we'll go ahead and hit uh, Control V. Drag this little box over a little bit, bring this one into here, bring this one into here, and boom, now whenever we use a sword attack, it will also take the same amount of stamina. It will take 10 stamina to use the attack, and that's it can't do anything after that. So now our character is bound by stamina constraints. We can do the same thing with jumping or whatever we wanted to do, but for now we'll just keep it at the stamina tag for attacks. So now we have recharging stamina, we have stamina that depletes with attacks, we can drag this over a little bit to keep this all uh, boxed together, and uh, actually we can go ahead and put a C around this. So what you do is if you want to put a comment around something, just drag a box and type in C, and it will let you comment it. So stamina, stam I can't spell stamina, down consumption sure stamina consumption do the same thing with this one but i know that they're the same if you want to label them both you can go ahead and do that 
compile, save. So now we've got stamina being used in the game, stamina being consumed. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a health pickup. So to go ahead and create our health pickup, what we're going to do is head over into the items tab that we created earlier. We're going to create a new tab folder called pickups, a new folder called health. And in this folder, as you can see, I already have a health pickup in here because I screwed up the first time. So we're going to go ahead and hit this again. So once again, right click blueprint, and then you're going to go ahead and click on the actor option that comes up right here. And we're going to call this health pickup two because I'm stupid. All right, so health pickup two, what we're going to do is we're going to add something for you to walk into. So the first thing we're going to add is a sphere just because it's easy to see in the game. We have our sphere added into the screen. This sphere is going to be huge, so we're just going to shrink it a little bit down to 0.33. So once again, transform scale down to 0.33s across the board. Next thing we need to do is make it so we can actually see this item. So we're going to change the material of it. So once again, you're on your sphere. You look at the bottom right over here. You see a tab that says materials. Scroll down the list and find something that looks interesting to you. Let's go with this. Uh, I don't know which one looks pretty cool. How about this gold option? Cool. So we have a little gold sphere that's going to heal our person. So compile, save. This is our gold sphere. The next thing we need to do is add a box collision to this. So we're going to go ahead and type in box collision and we have a box collision added. What we want to do with this box collision is we want to go, well first we want to make sure the sphere doesn't bump into anything. So on the sphere what we want to do is you see where it says uh, collision, block all dynamic, we want to change this to overlap all. So this is going to overlap everything. Same thing with the box but it should already be overlap all. Okay so it's already set to overlap all. So now what's going to happen is we're going to head down and we're going to select the box and then at the bottom down here you're going to see a whole bunch of different events. The one we want is the second tab. It's on component begin overlap. So this option right here, click this little plus and then you're going to need to click the event graph. So event graph up at the top. On this you're going to see event component begin overlap. What you're going to want to do is drag off the other actor and what we want to do is see if this is our player character. So we're going to do cast to 2D side scroller character. If it's the 2D side scroller character, it's going to do whatever we say. If not, it's not going to do anything. So like if an opponent walks by or if like an AI walks by this, it's not going to get rid of it. It'll still be there for the player. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the player's health. We're going to get their health. We're going to take their health and we're going to add 10 to it. So we're going to take this and we're going to go plus, just type in the plus key, float plus float, select that. Then you're going to go ahead and type in 10. We'll add 10 health to the character. Then we, what we down going to do is set the health of the character. So set the character's health add the 10 back into the character, connect the nodes, and now our character's health is going to be set to 10. The final thing, or set to 10 more than what it was, the final thing we need to do is destroy this actor so the player can't keep running over it. So right click, destroy actor, this option right down here, and this is going to destroy the little orb when it's done being picked up. So if I head back over to my play menu and I take my health pickup, and let's put this one over here, uh, we're going to go ahead and drop this onto the map here. So right here, right on the platform, let's bring it up a little bit so we can actually walk into it. Perfect, save this level and go ahead and hit play. So now if I walk into this item, so you can see there it is right there, the little black square. Go ahead and click on that or walk over it. You saw my health pop up by 10. So that is how we create a little pickup to increase our health. Likewise, you can create a health regen system just like the stamina that we'd already created if you wanted to go via that route. Um, so many different options to go for doing this methods. And anyway guys, that is basically it. So what we've done in this video is we've created a little health and stamina system. We have our stamina deplete whenever we use one of our attacks. And we have little pickups that will increase our health. Our stamina regenerates slowly. So we have the basics of any game that we have out here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our very own level. So I'll show you how to do a level design. Basically create a little flat level that we can go ahead and prototype in. Something that is not this starter template that has scroller template pastered all over it. So anyway guys, make sure you like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on the series when new videos come out. And I will see you at the next video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Peace.